Welcome to the On My Workbench channel. About two weeks ago I found Linksys 54G model WRT54GL wireless routers listed on Linksys website for $36 each. I have been using Linksys 54G routers for years and found them to be reliable and easy to set up and use. So I bought five just to have a few spares on hand. In this video I will describe how I cascaded multi-Linksys 54G routers into a low-cost network that allows me to have internet service in my house, workshop, and pole barn. The cell phone service at our house is so bad we have to use Wi-Fi calling to make and receive calls on our cell phones. With this low-cost and easy-to-build network we now have internet and cell phone service around our property, in the house, and on the inside and outside of our steel buildings. The first thing you're going to want to do is take the installation CD that came with the router and throw it in a trash can. To start, configure router number one as shown in this router number one for setup drawing. Okay, open a browser, type in the IP address of the router which is 192.168.1.1. Hit enter. It'll give you a dialog box for a password. The password is admin. You only need to put it in the password. You don't need a username. Hit enter. It'll take you to the setup page. Confirm that it says English. You want automatic configuration DHCP. This is the most common setup setting for uh, most cable companies. So try that one first. Set your local IP to 192.168.1.1 .1 and your DHCP server should be enabled. Set your time zone to whatever your local time zone is. Mine happens to be central time and then confirm that the automatic adjust clock for daylight saving time is clicked. Click save settings then click continue and it takes you back to the setup page. We're going to configure our wireless settings starting with our basic wireless settings. The 54G has four modes disabled, mix, B only, and G only. In mix mode it'll transmit B and G. If you only have G devices or B devices just select what you have. If you don't know what you have go with mixed. If you have both go with mixed. In my case I only have G so I'm going with G. The 54G will not do 5 gigahertz. It only does 2.4. The wireless network name or SSID I'm going to use YouTube Demo. Wireless channel I'm going to leave it at 6. The SSID broadcast I will enable that so I can see the name when I go to log in with my, uh, my devices. Save settings, continue. Okay, we're going to continue with wireless. Click on wireless security. The default mode is disabled. The 54G has WPA Personal, WPA Enterprise, WPA2 Personal, WPA2 Enterprise, Radius, and WEP. I'm selecting WEP. The reason for this is the Roku player doesn't like any of the other settings. I don't know why. Linksys, Roku, here's an opportunity for you. Get together, try to figure out why the Roku doesn't like your other settings. I'm going to put the passphrase in. I'm going to use and generate the key. Now once these keys are generated you want to write them down. If you lose them you'll have to reset your router to be able to get back in if you don't have those keys. My understanding is the default transmit key 1 is for key 1, 2 is for key 2, 3 is for 3 and so forth. So if you select 2 it'll only respond to key 2. If you select 4 it will only respond to key 4. I'm selecting key 1. Click Save, Continue, and we're back to our wireless security screen.
We're going to continue with our router configuration. We're going to change administration password. Click administration. By default the router password is admin. We're going to change that to YouTube Save Settings Enter YouTube Log in and We're back in and that concludes router number one setup configuration so now we've finished up router 1 and we're going to configure router 2. We've disconnected router 1, put router 2 in its place. You need to type in the same IP address 192.168.1.1 admin we want our basic setup English Automatic configuration DHCP. We want to change our IP address to 2. We want the DHCP server disabled. We want to set the time zone. Again, in my particular case, it's central. We want it to automatically adjust the clock. Save settings. Now what will happen here is you will have to log back in. Logging back in. Confirm our settings. English automatic configuration IP address 192.168.1.2 DC DHCP server disabled central time zone and automatic clock adjustment okay this is part two for router number two we go to wireless basic wireless settings set our mode for G only put in our router name YouTube demo change our channel number to 1 confirm our SSID broadcast is enabled save settings continue okay we're gonna do router number 2 part 3 wireless security set our security mode to WEP Confirm that we're on key number one, 64 bit, 10 hex digits. Type in YouTube demo, generate our keys. That's the same keys we had before. Save our settings. Continue. Okay, now what we're going to do is router number two, part four, changing the administration password. 192.168.1.2 We'll go over here to administration. Change that to YouTube. Save the settings. It will ask us to log in again. Okay, what we've done, we've configured two routers nearly identical. Router number one has an IP address of 1.1. This one has an IP address of 1.2. Router number one has a DHCP server enabled. This one has a server disabled. The reason you do that is the first router, router 1.1, will be the one that will assign IP addresses. If you have two of them, it'll lock the system up and your network won't work. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at our wireless networks. 
view the networks, refresh, and it's only showing one YouTube demo. That's the only one. They're both there, but it's only displaying it as one. I want to make a note here. Do not try to wirelessly log into YouTube demo while both routers are sitting next to one another. If they're separated by space, in other words, if one's in one end of your house and one's in the other, or one's in your house and one's in a workshop such as I have, then whichever one has the strongest signal strength, that's the one your device will log into. But if they're sitting right next to each other, the signal strength is pretty close to the same and the, devi the device will get confused and it won't know which one to log into. So don't do it. Okay, the next thing that needs to be done is configure the two routers as shown in this drawing. We'll be doing a back-to-back -back router check to confirm that we have the settings correct. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to log into each router. 192.168.1.1 for router number 1. 192.168.1.2 for router number 2. Let's look at num router number 1. Our, P our IP address is 1.1. .1. It's enabled. Our wireless is on channel 6. If we go to router number 2, our IP address is 1.2. It's disabled and our wireless is channel 1. Now that the setup is complete, you're going to want to set up your routers in this configuration. Where router number 1 will be next to your cable or DSL modem. Router number 2 will be at a remote location of your house or in another building. They'll be linked together by a CAT5 cable. With your network configured in this manner, all you have to do is walk from one location to another and your network device will transition from router to router automatically. You don't need to log in or do anything, it will do it for you. I have three routers configured in my system with CAT cables going from the house to the workshop and from the workshop to the pole barn. All I have to do is just walk from one to the other and it automatically logs in. Okay, what we're going to do here is I'm going to log into all of my routers and my cable modem. This is my Frontier cable modem. This is my first router. If you notice this one is set up as enabled. has an IP address of 1.1. .1. This is my second router. It has an IP address of 1.2 and it is disabled. This is my third modem. It has an IP address of 1.3 and it also is disabled. And this is my solar panels and, s and batteries. So I can access anything that's on the network from any of the routers. The hardest part of the project was running the CAT5 cables from the house to the workshop and from the workshop to the pole barn. I recommend putting the CAT5 cables in conduit. I use inch and a quarter conduit so I could add more cables should I ever have the need. You can continue to add additional routers by following this procedure. Just be sure that you sequence the IP addresses according to the procedure. I don't know the maximum number of routers that can be added, but it should be quite a few. Please check back with the On My Workbench channel for more videos on cool stuff. Please subscribe, like, comment, and click the little bell. And thanks from the On My Workbench channel.